So Nanlux has a brand new product announcement uh, today. What is it? We are introducing the Evo 1200. It is a 1200 watt LED um, spotlight with an uh, assortment of accessories. Um, I think the three main takeaways to get away from this light that's right behind me is that it's, um, it's IP54, it's high powered, and it's compact and extremely versatile. Um, the reason why I say it's versatile is because it's a 1200 watt LED. Now there's other lights on the market like with our sister brand Nanlite with the Forza 500. And this is gonna be two and a half times the output. And it puts it in the category in the professional market where what Nanlux is targeted for is for a 1.8K PAR and a um, 2.5K HMI. So when you look at this light, um, that's a lot smaller than lights you're used to that are putting that type of output, so hence the versatility. You put this into a lantern, into a gym ball, you're lighting up huge spaces with, the, you know, with M18 type of output, but in a much smaller design. Um, this comes off, so this isn't a single piece. Now you have something here. It's a lot easier to work with. As you can see, it's a, uh, you know, this is pretty unique. Now just to put in perspective, since I made that plug. So here is a Forza 300B, one of our other new products in our sister brand. So you look at the size comparison, it's bigger, but it's not that much bigger to be a beast of a light to put that type of output. So, and we've seen uh, sort of a market trend, I guess, over the last couple of years of of more of these sort of point source lights coming to market because of their versatility, the the ability to be able to use them as a hard source to adapt to Fresnel, to use them with a the giant softbox. Uh, is that something you think we're going to see continue in the industry? That more lights like this, that are more sort of like a Swiss Army knife style, where you can use them for a variety of different purposes, I think so. come to market. But I can only speak for our company, and I can tell you that this is only the first one. Um, Twelve hundred watts is not the end. That's going to be the beginning, and we want to go up from there. So, yeah. And there's not a lot of actual, I mean, I guess as far as competition out there on the market, we've seen a lot of sort of similar style lights out there, but a lot of them tend to be a lot lower power draw. This is probably one of the few out there that's right. now sort of above a thousand yeah. watts. Let me, let me put this back. I'm doing it, the beauty of live television. Well, it's live to me. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, the reason some people will ask, you know, everything is either bicolor or RGB these days, but this one is uh, daylight or tungsten. So you have the choice of variations. And the reason why we didn't do bicolor or RGB is because we want to get that output. I mean, most uses you're doing daylight or tungsten for a key light anyway. That's what this is. Or if you're doing an area light, um, you know, if you want to gel it, you can. People are like, well, we have gel libraries. Gels today are, are push of a button, not physically adding it to the front of a light. But we feel that with our Dino series, you have a lot of color options there. But with the Evoke, we feel like that's a unique offering where you can get a, a exceptionally powerful key light in daylight or tungsten in ways that are a little different than what our dynos offers. So we have a lot more versatility as far as our product family. And we feel like for the needs of uh, the users, the end users. And what's the, what's the sort of actual mount that's being used on the Evoke? Is it a Bowens mount or something proprietary or? Um, no, it's not a Bowens mount. It's, it looks like a Bowens mount. It has a fourth stud. It's, a, it's our proprietary ML mount. But um, we are already being fitted for DOP Choice, um, Chimera, Honeycrates is putting, well, Honeycrates doesn't make accessories for this light, but, you know, accessory manufacturers are making, you know, accessories based on this mount. 
So the reason why we didn't go with Bowens is because Bowens isn't really a widely used mount in motion picture industry. It's more photographic, but you know, say that to all the Forza 500 owners that have got three ton trucks, <laughs> you know, they're using them too. But um, the reason why we did that is because the it's a 65 millimeter COB. So that is almost as large as the back of a Bowens mounted reflector. So for optimized output and just, you know, appropriateness for this light, Bowens just wasn't the right way to go. So. And I'd see on the light there that you've got that, is that the optional um, Fresnel attachment that you've got attached to the Evoke? Yes, this is the optional Fresnel. And then we also have, oops, I think I bumped our logo. Sorry. Let me start that again. Okay. So this is the reflector that comes with the light. And so this one is a little bit bigger. Let me give a little perspective on it. So here's the Forza 300 reflector. And so you'll see it's a little bit wider. It's a bit wider. So... This is where the, um, the, the COB fills up this whole space. And so we need a little more room for s stability and mounting options. So that's why we went this way with a different mount. So. Yeah. And the Fresnel, what's the, um, the beam angle adjustability of that? It's 11 to 45 degrees. And I take it, it, I mean, it looks fairly large, so I guess it has to have been sort of optimized for the actual sort of size of the COB in terms to get the best sort of, um, you know, output and performance. Yes, it is a, the model number or name of the uh, uh, accessory is FL35. And that's because it's 35 millimeters or centimeters, sorry, centimeters. Uh, 35 centimeters in diameter or 13.77 inches. And does it have space in the back of it to put uh, um, wire mesh grids or anything like that? Or Yes, it has a drop-in. Uh, the barn doors actually are included and they slide out. So you do have a, a circular bracket to, to drop in if you wanted to do other things like that. So. I'm sure accessory manufacturers are going to find different uses for them. And does the Fresnel come with barn doors? Yes, it does come with barn doors. Yeah, these are at four. And then this one, I have two that extend in size. So whatever options you want to do, you have them. And so as you see in this configuration here, we have the... A uh, yoke attached to the Fresnel, but if you were going to use included a uh, reflector, then you would attach the yoke here. This locks in, and then you would use it that way. So, pretty easy. Pretty easy. And in terms of controlling the light, what are the, what are the options that are available to do that? Um, this one, all Nanlux products with the dynos. TK series and now the Evoke, they come with Lumen Radio TMO2 chips built in. So you can control it with either Bluetooth or with CRMX. You have Wi Fi, uh, we have 5 pin DMX in and out, RDM, and those are your options there. So, yeah. And I believe it also comes with a, a, a wired controller. There is a wired controller coming. Yes. There's a wired controller coming for the dynos and for the Evoke. And I can't wait to see it because I think that's going to be more options that you'd like to have. Because sometimes you might want to go wireless. You might want to just do manual. You have a smaller setup or, you know, it's out of reach. And so, um, yeah, either way, it's, it's really good. I'm looking forward to doing some tests on the range. Um, the the range of the of the radios and the dynos is exceptionally uh, long. I mean, we were at Rat Pack with their AKS Plus, and we did some tests and dropped the dynos in the middle of their factory. Went out to the opposite end of the parking lot, 
did miss a beat with, you know, this is no clear line of sight. There's lots of walls in between and it kept going. So I like to see how this one fares. Cause this one, I think because of this type of output and because it has a lighter weight, um, that's where the versatility comes in. And these things can be placed in areas that heavier lights um, might not be able to go unless you have a bigger budget for a much more powerful rigging system, um, you know, that are much more expensive. So I think this is going to find its way in a lot of places where other similar lights um, might not be able to go. So. And I saw too, you're going to have um, kits available and also the ability to be able to mount multiple evoke lights inside one sort of fixture frame. Yeah. Yeah. They have a two light kit and a four light kit frame, not just four lights, but to mount four lights and use together in one setup. I don't know what kind of output. I can't wait to see what that looks like. I'm going to wear sunglasses. So be pretty awesome and speaking of output um you know what sort of um figures in terms of lux are we talking about with with this uh with, with the evoke at say a distance of three meters um as far as output goes we're looking at with a bare ball uh just over 5500 lux uh with the reflector on we're looking at oh it doesn't have it that way Okay, with the spot, we're looking at 68,300 lux with the, uh, with the Fresnel on at 10 degrees or 11 degrees. And then we have 14,530 lux at three meters at 45 degree flood. So. Yeah, so that's a, that's a decent amount of, of output. So this is really a light that's being targeted as a, you know, an LED replacement for traditional HMIs. Yeah, yeah. I just... You know, when I draw the comparison of our existing Forza line, um, I, I just draw that one because I think because of the price point, it's going to reach a wide audience. Um, we're targeting for the professional motion picture industry and people, like you said, who are trying to replace hot lights with LEDs. And now they have a, a legitimate contender with that type of output. But there's also people who want more power, who are content creators who normally have been using certain kind of lights now see something that's in their price range that's going to be a significant step up. So, yeah. So speaking of um, um, price and availability, how much is the sort of the base unit um, Evoke going to be? How much is the Fresnel going to be? And, and when are they expected to start shipping? Well, we're a couple of weeks away from quarter number three. So I will say quarter three. Um, we're trying to get these out as soon as possible, um, but the pricing is going to be the basic kit will be with the reflector, the yoke, and the light unit and ballast and power cables and everything. That's going to be thirty three eighty uh, MSRP, and then it's going to be eight ninety for the Fresnel attachment. And you've obviously probably shown this around to to quite a lot of people so far. What's the general sort of feedback or reaction been about the Evoke? Well, here in L.A. and in Hollywood, we've gotten amazing feedback. I mean, people are looking at, you know, some of the people that we showed us to, as far as an LED goes, they don't really see a competitor for this light because it's, if it's output and its size, it's like there's really nothing like it. So they see a ton of potential with this light. Um, we, when we introduced this to our distributor network um, a few weeks ago, hundreds i mean they the, the they sold a bunch they've already done pre-orders and so i think it's going to be a big success so we're in every major market around the world so it's going to be very easy to find your local nanlux dealer or distributor and you'll be able to get them when they're available so i would say you know subscribe to our social media accounts um, we're nanlux americas in the u.s and we're nanlux global for the rest of the world and even some of our distributors have their own accounts as well but you'll be easy to find out when and where they'll be available we have accessories coming out uh, that that will make available to start where we're going to have a soft box an octa box 
um, a lantern. Um, like I said, um, DOP Choice is making a lot of amazing accessories for this light. Um, and I think that they're going to be really impressive. Um, I just love to see a light this bright from this size and a big five foot octabox. I mean, no hot spot, just a beautiful power, um, a nice spread of just beautiful soft light. But then you throw in the Fresnel and you have an amazing sharp, you know, beam of, of hard light. And so I think I'm really excited to see what people do with this light, you know, later this summer when the, when the light finally hits the market. So we've got a ton of accessories. We got a great opportunity for what it offers in the marketplace to just see what people do with it. So I'm very excited about it. So.